This is Explaining the Future with me, Sunny Baines. At university, scientists and engineers get good grades for coming up with great ideas and then implementing them well. But these skills, however important, are not enough to allow you to succeed. To graduate, you'll have to give presentations and write reports, dissertations, and theses. Then, once you're in the real world, you'll have to write proposals to get your bosses or funders to back your ideas. Getting them to pay attention isn't always easy. The reason most technical people fail to get their ideas noticed is that they dive straight into the details. This leads to confusion because the audience doesn't have time to understand what the project is trying to achieve and why it's important. However, there are things you can do to help your chances. Today we're going to talk about the elements that go into making a technical argument, one that is structured so that you take your audience from their initial state of blissful ignorance to where you want them, well informed and on your side. You have to start by remembering that things that are perfectly obvious to you are not obvious to other people. Some of your audience might know what an ion and neutral mass spectrometer is and why you might want to use one, but most will not. To make people care about an instrument like this, you must put it in context. That means starting with a vision, how it will make the world better. In this case, you would begin with astronomers wanting to know what the mysterious rings of Saturn are made of and how old they are. Then, you would discuss the Cassini mission and what it was sent to do. After that, you could get into the instrument, for instance, where it is on the spacecraft and what kind of data it's designed to collect. Only then does it make sense to talk about how it works and the kind of results it provides. Just remember, no one will understand or care about any of that without your starting with the vision. After we explain what we'd like the future to be, then we will have to make sure that everyone understands the present. New technology is pointless unless there's a reason why today's technology isn't good enough. What's wrong with today's technology might be based on performance, functionality, cost, any of the features that will enable us to achieve the vision successfully. What's critical about the status quo is that it provides a benchmark or starting point so that once you make progress, people can see how far you've come. Whatever the status quo is, there's presumably some reason for it, some problem that has to be solved to get you closer to the goal. What is it? An algorithm that scales badly? Poor material purity? Insufficient network connectivity? Whatever it is, we need to understand the problem you are trying to solve and how it fits into the overall vision. I'm guessing you're not the first person in the world who has tried to solve this problem. So talk about the other solutions out there. What are they good for? What constraints do they work under? What do they do well and badly? Most importantly, why aren't they right for your situation? Finally, you're ready for the main event, your new solution, what it is, how it works or will work if it's a design, and how it avoids the pitfalls of the others you've considered. If you have results, present them. Most scientists and engineers find this part of the argument the easiest to deal with. Don't forget to discuss any obvious obstacles to the success of your new solution. If you don't bring them up, others will, and this will leave you looking either foolish or deceptive or both. On the other hand, if you raise these difficulties yourself, you can suggest ways to mitigate or get around them. Finally, you should compare your new solution with the others you discussed. Show how it contributes to the overall vision and give some kind of prognosis for the future. What needs to be done next? What will this mean for users, science, the environment, or whatever domain you're trying to help? By methodically going through your technical argument elements in the right order, you can provide the context and detail that your audience needs to follow your work. This is a crucial step in explaining the future. For further information, please see Chapter 7 in the book. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to check out our website. <laughs>